Oh, I want to start off by saying how excited we are about Cruel Intentions coming back to Melbourne. This was a show that um, I saw on opening night, and then I had so many friends who wanted to go and see it. I think I went back about four or five times to see it. So, congratulations on making such an impact on Melbourne and coming back to Melbourne. Oh my goodness, thank you so much, and thank you for all your support. No problem at all. Kelsey, tell us a little bit about what it was like for you when you first found out that you were going to be in Cruel Intentions, the musical, especially playing the role of Annette. It was crazy. I mean, the audition process was so fun that I just assumed I wouldn't book the job. Um, It consisted of a few self-tapes and then a few in-person auditions. Um, This is one of the first shows that I auditioned for since graduating from university. And, you know, it can be daunting, but the creative team was so warm and welcoming to everyone. And I honestly just had the best time. We rehearsed the show in two weeks, um, which is kind of unheard of. Um, especially because this is an Australian premiere, we uh, were allowed to kind of uh, explore what the show would look like for an Australian audience. So we did have a really close relationship with the writer and director of the film, Roger, and also Jordan and Lindsay too. Um, but yeah, we were able to kind of manipulate this to make sense for Australian audiences, which I thought was awesome. And as you said, you've seen the show and the scale of the show is, is really huge with everything that we're putting on, you know, the set, the lighting and the design. So it took us a little while but we are up and running and it has been incredible exactly i was going to say you just blew me away when you said that you rehearsed it in two weeks because that um the set movement alone is um fantastic during this show what was that like learning all of that within two weeks and like you said this being one of your first professional theater productions as well it was yeah as i said it was it was it was a time it was a time it was two weeks Everything moved very quickly, but I still felt like I had enough time to get a grasp on my character and for everyone else to do the same and for us to really explore every avenue um, of what the show could be. Now that leads into my next question as well. How much about the character of Annette did you know before you went for that audition? Had you ever seen the film Cruel Intentions or was it all oh. fresh for you? I'll tell you a little secret. I'm not actually born in the 90s, so I'm a 2000s baby. Yeah. So I didn't know much about Cool Intentions except for the really iconic moments that, you know, you can even see on Instagram now. So, like, the iconic kiss and the funny faces scene. Um, so, yeah, I didn't know too much about Cool Intentions. But, you know, I'm filling the shoes of Reese Witherspoon, and I'm, I'm not sure if that's even possible. They're, they're certainly big shoes to fill, but I hope that I can kind of capture some of the essence of what Reese brought to this role um, as part of the pre-work and the activities that we did in the rehearsal room under the direction of Alistair Smith. I've kind of gone back and, and studied Reese's perception of who Annette is, especially into comparison of the way that Michelle Pfeiffer played it in Dangerous Liaisons. But also, you know, Annette was one of Reese Witherspoon's first first leading roles and it's one of my first leading roles. It is my first leading role. So it's been a privilege to study Reese but also to kind of bring myself to the stage. Um, you know, although we are using the same material from the movie, we are really looking at it through uh, 2023 lens. Yeah. So it allows each character to understand sorry, each actor to understand their character and really make it their own by, you know, using the knowledge and the understandings we have today. I think, you know, for me personally, there are definitely a few qualities of Annette Hargrove that I see myself. You know, ironically, both of my parents are principals of high school, so that's already an understanding there. But it's been such a joy to expand and grow with her over this year and a bit um, and, yeah, really delve into how she thinks and how she acts. And you've taken the role right around Australia as well. Have you felt that um, Annette's kind of evolved during that journey as well? Like, do you feel that the character kind of grows every night that you're on the stage? A hundred percent. I booked this job when I was 21. I'm now 22, about to turn 23. So I've sat with this character for a while. So, you know, even into this new version of the tour, I've really uh, come back to her and... Yeah, delved deeper into how she thinks and how she moves and how she holds herself and how she responds to certain characters and situations. So, yeah, as I said, it's been such a privilege to be able to have her for such a long time and to continue to grow and evolve as an actor and as a character. Now, do you think not knowing about the film and not having seen it actually helped you with the role? Because I remember I spoke to Kirby 
um, when it first came to Melbourne, and she said that one of the things that she found difficult about going into the role of Catherine was that she had grown up kind of watching the film and had uh, had was kind of scared to take on Sarah Michelle Gellar's role. Do you think not having seen the film actually helped some of those nerves for you? Oh, I don't know if you'll ever not feel nervous when you're taking on such an ica- iconic character and playing a role made by made iconic by Reese Witherspoon. I don't know if those nerves will ever go away. Um, so, uh, yeah, I don't know if that helped or hindered me. Um, but, yeah, as I said, I'm very grateful that I get to do this every night and get to play with such an incredible uh, cast. Yeah. Now, you mentioned before about the iconic scenes from the film, but, of course, the soundtrack was very iconic as well. It gave us some amazing tracks. Um, it introduced, I think, uh, Aussies to bands like Placebo and bands like that that previously hadn't really had a stranglehold on the Australian market. Music plays such a big part of the stage production as well. Tell us a little bit about what it was like for you getting to sing some of those iconic tracks for the first time when you first stepped down onto the stage as well. Yeah, so the show features a 90s soundtrack of 21 iconic songs, including Bittersweet Symphony, Every You Every Me, Bye Bye Bye. It's It really is just banger after banger. I think there's a beautiful mix of grunge that is clearly evident in the 90s, but there's also an element that I like to call bubblegum pop. Um, and also, it's not just a jukebox musical. Each song is kind of really written into the story. It, it either elevates the comedy and it enhances the emotion or the narrative. Um, so everything kind of comes back to the story. And yeah, as you said, these songs have such a special place in my heart and I've been singing them since I've been singing. Um, so... It's the best when I get to stand on stage and sing these songs and the audience laughs or, um, you know, they're singing along with me. It, it's something that I've never experienced in a theatre yep. and that is insane to me. Also, our band. Our band is led by uh, Daniel Puppy and our band is actually on stage with us, which really lifts the energy of the entire show. It makes moments more intimate and others. It kind of feels like you're at a rock concert, which yeah. again is something that I've never really experienced in theatre either. Now, one song that people don't sing along to, I know, is one of yours, Foolish Games, because that track, when you perform it, it gives people goosebumps. So every time I've gone along with friends, they've walked away saying that that was one of the highlights of the show. You put so much emotion into that song. What is it like for you on stage singing that track? Because it feels like you're feeling every single word of that track. That is so kind. Thank you so much. I do. I really do. I feel everything that Annette is feeling in in that moment. And it is my favorite number to sing on stage. I can really just let everything out. And yeah, it's, it's such a pivotal moment for her in the show. And it feels, I'm so passionate about that moment. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for those kind words. That's, that's so... Uh, beautiful and touching that, you know, it affects people the way that it affects me. I think that's kind of my goal as an artist and to hear that, you know, some people are going home and and, uh, feeling those types of feelings is is amazing. Yeah. Like I said as well, like, this show's gone right around Australia now as well. How have you found that you've bonded with the rest of the cast? Because that's kind of rare these days. Like, quite often... um, You'll have massive cast changes if a musical does go interstate. What's that been like with only very, very small cast changes and that core group being together for this production? Yeah, so we have an all-Australian cast of triple threat talent in addition to also our multi-green room award-winning creative team. So for me, like, what more could I ask for in the way of role models in this industry when I get to go on stage and work with Kirby Burgess, Andrew Weston and Femme Belling and everyone else in the cast? It has been such a pinch-me moment. I remember watching Kirby in Wedding Singer and I remember I've got Drew on my Spotify. Like, I was such a fan girl when I met both of them. Um, They've been so generous and supportive, and I I love sharing the stage with them. This cast really does inspire me to give my absolute all, and we are so close. You know, as I said, there's 14 of us. Um, Yeah, so we are really close, which is great because it makes every relationship even deeper, and, yeah, everything just feels, um, yeah, it's it's so lovely. I, I, I 
I'm so blessed. Now, I have to ask, what was that moment like? As you said, you were such big fans of them before you um, got this role. What was that like the first day you walked into rehearsal and they were all there? Yeah, so the first time I met Drew and Kirby was we were doing a, a media photo shoot at the Athenaeum Theatre. And I remember Kirby was on stage in her red wig and Drew was standing next to her in his turtleneck. And I walked up to the dressing room and I sat down and they were doing my makeup and I turned to the makeup artist and I just said, what is my life right now? <laughs> it was so insane. As I said, I have watched them and their careers and to be able to work alongside them and to call them my friends and, you know, to text them and go to breakfast with them. It's it's still so crazy to me. And, I'm yeah, I'm so grateful that I get to work with them and share these moments with them. Um, but, yeah, the, in, the rehearsal room meeting everyone, it was, it was such a warm and exciting buzz in the room day of rehearsals we knew we had a lot of work to do we only had two weeks to get this up and running but it was yeah the buzz and that the feeling the fire in your tummy to kind of get everything done and working with such professionals uh it, yeah it's been amazing um we've talked a, a little bit about how this was your first professional production what advice would you give to young actors and actresses out there who maybe in high school at the moment or maybe going through um, performing arts school, what would your advice be to them now that you've got into a professional production? Oh, it's such a tough question. Um, I would say... I think everything comes down to just trusting yourself and your craft and your ability to navigate everything that you face in this world. Um, I think, yeah, that would be my advice. Just trust yourself and, yeah, everything that is meant to be is meant to be. And, yeah, um, go through every door um, feeling super positive and, yeah, let, have take every opportunity that you can. Everything, you know, small, big, everything is a learning opportunity. Um, and, yeah, that's... that's would be my advice at the moment hopefully awesome. you can give me a call after a couple more shows and my advice might be totally different <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing advice and, and kelsey i know we're running out of time very very quickly so just to finish off what would you like to say to all the people here in melbourne before they go and grab tickets to come and see this amazing show once again i think i would say cruel intentions it's a fun nostalgic trip it's the ultimate 90s throwback experience that I think will have audiences laughing, singing, and dancing in the aisles. Whether you are into grunge, baggy pants, or bubblegum pop and butterfly clips, I think this show has you covered. And especially after a turbulent last few years with the impact of the pandemic and COVID-19, I think this show is what everyone needs. It's an enjoyable, cheeky, fun night at the theatre.